Look! She stopped! If only I could have more than this. You probably think I'm being silly, huh? All this hopeless resisting? It's better to dream of what I could have than try to make it a reality, right? Please, help us get on the same page here, Cleary. We need you to tell us what you know. Can you do that? Sure. Although, after you hear all this, I think you might regret that decision. Everyone in this family is nothing more than a tool. Something to be used and exploited. We're all expendable. Including me. As long as you're useful, you get to stick around. Lose your value. And you're handed over to the doctor. Experimented on and given a fate worse than death. I've seen it happen again and again, and I've had enough. You're saying the knave did all that? It's just, that doesn't seem like something she would do. She's scary and all, but it seems like even she has lines she wouldn't cross. Hmm. I knew you wouldn't believe me. Everyone thinks she's a good person. They all think of her like a real mother. Mother? But she doesn't deserve that title. She's disgraced it and tarnished it. And if I had things my way, I'd never see her again. If only Perry were here, she'd understand. Perry? There's that name again. Also, Paimon's getting a strange feeling. It almost feels like she's not really here with us. Paimon can't tell if she's actually talking to us, or if she's mistaken us for someone else. Hmm. Well, in any case, it seems like she really needs someone to talk to. We should keep her company for a little longer. She looks so young. But it seems like she's been through a lot. <sighs> it's getting windy. I should close the window. Ooh, look at the moon! Isn't it pretty? Hey, wanna hear a secret? I heard that if you look up at the night sky in Shnezhnaya, you can see the aurora. It's supposed to be super pretty. Even prettier than the moon tonight. Perry and I promised each other that once we're older, we're gonna go see it together. But I can't find her. I'm worried she's also been... No, that wouldn't happen to her. She's special. Mother likes her a lot. We should really go talk to Mother, but we just fought. She doesn't want to see me, and I'm too scared to face her. What should I do? really doesn't understand what's going on with her. Well, let's head back. We've got an early morning tomorrow. All right, looks like we're all here. Let's go ahead with the plan. Oh? What is it? What makes you ask that? Well, we kind of ran into Clairview last night, and that's what she told us. We met the doctor back in Sumeru. He's super dangerous, and he's done all sorts of bad things. It's possible that Father and the doctor have had certain dealings, but I don't think Father would work with him. We're not really on the same side, so there's not a lot of trust between them. That doesn't exactly set the stage for a successful partnership. 
I did hear, though, that when Father first became a harbinger, the doctor offered to work with the House of the Hearth. Father rejected most of his proposals, except for one. It had to do with some sort of secret experiment. Secret experiment? Could that be what Clairvy was talking about? Hmm, I don't think so. I don't know any details about the experiment itself, but I do know it's an entirely independent operation. The doctor only proposed a direction for the research. That was the extent of his involvement. I still don't think that counts as working together. The details of the experiment are confidential, but complete records are kept on all participants. That doesn't seem to be the case with the situation Clairvy referred to. I know you don't agree with some of the Fatui's methods, and I'm not asking you to. But I am asking you to trust us on this. The House of the Hearth has its own principles. There are certain lines we're not willing to cross. <sighs> Alright, that's good to hear at least. Clairvy seems to think the Knave and the Doctor worked together to do something horrible. If that turned out to be true, Paimon doesn't know how he would even face you guys. It's just that... it doesn't seem like Clairvy is lying, either. The easiest thing to do would be just ask the name directly, but... Paimon doesn't think she'd tell us. Father didn't come back last night. She's probably still near the shore. We'll be counting on you to distract her. Lynette, you're with me. Fremine, you know what to do. Be on your guard, everyone. Alright, let's get to it. Where are we going today? Let's try somewhere further away this time. It's you two again. I must say, you look a bit pale. Did you have trouble sleeping last night? Uh, a little. Perhaps if you had less on your mind, you'd be able to absolve yourself of such troubles. So what are you planning to do now? Catch up on some sleep? Or should I give you some time to rack your brain for a topic to discuss before I ask any questions? Although I must profess to being curious. Without child here, how do you plan on distracting me? Us? Distract you? <laughs> A g good one. But no, um, we were just here for a chat. Hmm. Looks like you could have used some extra time to think. No matter. If you don't have any other plans, why don't you accompany me somewhere? Don't worry. I'll be sure to steer clear of any scheming children. <sighs> The ocean breeze is sure nice today. Children always think they can hide things from the grown-ups. But nothing gets past me. Least of all a little scheming. I think I'll let them have at it for a little longer. I can be very patient. Well, I'll leave you to think things over. If you're so inclined, meet me outside the Palais Mermonia. Good things come to children who do as they're told. So I do hope you decide to tag along. If only for your friends' sakes. What should we do? She clearly knows about everything we've been doing, and Paimon doesn't think it'd be a stretch to say she was threatening us just now. Good idea! 
Hopefully he sees it in time. Well, we should probably head to the Palais Marmonia. Paimon doesn't want to find out what happens if we don't show up. Based on what the knave was saying just now, it sure didn't seem like it'd be anything good. Okay, then we probably shouldn't keep her waiting. It seems like Linny and the others are on thin ice, so let's do our best to not get them in any more trouble. Seeing as we still have some time before my meeting, we might as well enjoy some pleasant conversation while we wait. I'm glad to see you get along with my children. Being surrounded by good companions is necessary for a child's development. You're not planning on doing anything to them, are you? I assume you're referring to Lenny, Lynette, and Fremine. Although, there's that situation with Filial and Nentoy as well. Hmm. <sighs> It appears quite a few people have been acting out lately. No matter. I'm not one to discriminate. All those who betray the house meet the same fate. There are no exceptions. Does that mean you're going to kill them? Oh. Are you here to beg for their lives? I'm sorry to disappoint, but the rules of the house change for no one. In my organization, everyone is responsible for their own actions. But... Don't you care about them at all? They really respect you! They even call you father! You must feel something for them! Any organization in which feelings come before principles is one destined for ruin. The House of the Hearth is hardly an exception. You could say our principles are more stringent than most. Perhaps I can offer you this consolation at least. As our guests, you two will not be held accountable along with them. I would imagine Linny, Lynette, and Fremenay will be able to keep their lives. As for Filial, Nantoy, and the others, I'm afraid there's little I can do. They can try to escape, but once you know our secrets, there's no getting out alive. But... but that's... that's... that's awful! Ah, oh, you seem concerned. Out of consideration for my guests, I suppose I could turn a blind eye for a little longer. If Linny and the others manage to dispose of Claire V in the meantime, all evidence of their wrongdoing will be lost. In that case, I could hardly punish them for something I couldn't prove. If their efforts are unsuccessful, on the other hand, all will be held accountable. And the punishment will be severe. Of course. Oh, and here. I believe this belongs to you. Do try and keep better track of it next time. It takes a considerable amount of time to train a bird like this. It would be such a pity if you were to lose it. Permanently. Wait, where did you get that? Well, I'm afraid that's all the time we have to chat. Now, for the matter at hand. I asked you to meet me here because I have business at the Palais Marmonia. It has nothing to do with you, but I think it would be prudent for you to stick by my side for the time being. There will always be time later to run off and tell Linny what you've learned. Well, time to go. Looks like we wrapped things up just in time. It's been a while, Monsieur Nervalet. I must say, I wasn't expecting my meeting request to be approved quite so quickly. The Palais Mermonia operates with an efficiency worthy of admiration. It is only right that an esteemed diplomat such as yourself should be afforded the proper level of respect. Although, if I may speak plainly, 
I must confess that I did not anticipate we would have the occasion to meet again after presenting you with the Gnosis. I see you've brought the Traveler and Paimon with you as well. If I may inquire as to the purpose of your visit... I'll be departing Fontaine shortly. There is, however, an outstanding matter that I would like to see resolved before I go. It requires a rather lengthy explanation, I'm afraid. So I took the liberty of explaining everything in this proposal. Please review it at your leisure, Monsieur Nervelet. Hmm. I understand your request. However, at the risk of causing offense, I must admit that I fail to see why you would wish for such a thing. I heard you have a certain fondness for water tasting, Monsieur Nervelet, so allow me to use water as an analogy. A family is like a large body of water with countless rivers flowing in and out. As someone who watches over this system, I would hope that each river that flows from the source will eventually reach the ocean. Of course, objectively speaking, I know this is impossible. Most of the rivers will dry up along the way, disappearing into the ground and leaving nothing but a barren riverbed behind. Not all rivers are destined to reach the ocean, but I would not see their existence rendered meaningless. I believe the water that flows within them is simply meant for a different destination, like a field in need of irrigation. Or perhaps, the glass of a certain water-tasting enthusiast. Um, did you get any of that, Traveler? Your words paint an optimistic picture indeed. Allow me to remind you, however, few among us are willing to sip from a glass filled with tainted water. It may have been tainted at one point in time, but not to worry. I'll make sure it's strained of all impurities and returned to its cleanest form. Hmm. I seem to recall there being a transactional aspect to your proposal. Perhaps you could expound on that? If you accept my proposal, Monsieur Nervelet, I will gradually withdraw my forces from Fontaine. And, unless absolutely necessary, I will no longer carry out any special missions within Fontaine. I presume I can take your words to mean that, in the future, cases similar to the Tartuffe assassination will cease to cross my desk? Tartuffe? Ah... That thief who embezzled funds from all those charities, you mean? My deepest condolences to his family, but without any evidence, I cannot imagine how the House of the Hearth might have been involved in his passing. Of course, if you accept my proposal, Monsieur Nervelet, I'm sure certain measures could be taken to reduce the frequency of such troubles. You choose your words carefully, indeed. In that case, I am inclined to accept your proposal. My thanks for your generosity, Monsieur Nervelet. Well, with that settled, we should be going now. I took the liberty of bringing along two bottles of spring water from Snezhnaya for you to enjoy. I do hope I get the chance to hear your impressions. Perhaps at our next meeting, yes? Indeed. I trust you would not overlook your commitment in the meantime. All right, Traveler Paimon. Time to go. I believe I've told you before that my emotions easily resonate with those of others. Yet in the few meetings I've had with that Harbinger, I haven't been able to sense any aspect of her emotional state. Her mind is like a still body of water. Who knows what darkness lies in its depths, and the lack of ripples on the surface gives nothing away. It's unclear whether this is her natural state of being, or whether it's an incredible strength of will that gives her the ability to master her emotions. Either scenario, however, suggests she is a very dangerous individual. I do not expect an explanation as to why you two are by her side. 
Whatever your reasoning, I would only advise you to take caution. You really want to know? I would imagine there might be more pressing concerns at the moment. Oh, Winnie... Paimon really hopes everything's going okay. Oh! Paimon recognizes that look! You've got your ticket cap on, don't you, Traveler? Oh, jeez. I'm so sorry. I was so focused on selling these papers, I wasn't looking where I was going. Well, let me make it up to you at least. Here, take this paper. On the house. Oh, you don't have to give us anything. Please, I want to. It's not like I'm short on supply. All the extras will be useless come tomorrow anyway. It's my fault, really. I was just trying to bring home some extra mora for the family, but I bit off more than I can chew. I haven't had many takers today, so I'm still swimming in papers. What's going on here? Uh, nothing much. Uh, I just ran into your friend here on accident. I should probably get going, actually, so... Hold on. Um, of course, I'm happy to compensate you with Mora, it's just... I don't have any on me at the moment. I'll take three papers. Here, your payment. Oh! Thank you for your patronage. May the Archons bless you with good fortune. If only I had the chance to run into such generous customers every day. <laughs> I should probably just take on a smaller inventory though, right? I'm getting married soon, so sometimes it's hard to not get ahead of myself. Anyway, I should head out. Goodbye! Well, now that my affairs are settled, we should take the boat back to Poisson. We've even acquired some light reading to enjoy along the way. Actually, why don't we... Uh, stick around for a little longer? Uh, Paimon just realized how hungry she is! She can't head back to Poisson on an empty stomach. It appears you two are under the impression that delaying our return will somehow alter the situation in your favor. I'm sorry to ruin your fantasy, but your efforts are meaningless. That being said, I could be persuaded to give Linny some extra time. I just have one condition. If you agree to my request, I'll even answer some of your questions. You're quite curious about Claire V, are you not? And my relationship to her. Wait, why are you being so generous all of a sudden? You're not gonna ask us to do something bad, are you? You overestimate yourself. You don't have the talent for bad things. Uh, then what can you possibly... The most important consideration in a negotiation is that both sides receive something they want. Demands and threats only get you so far. Wonderful. Here it is. When the time comes, make the choice that you deem most appropriate in the situation, and lend your help to the House of the Hearth. Okay. Sounds normal enough. 
What do you mean, when the time comes? When is that supposed to be? That is for you to decide. Then we have a deal. Follow me. Place. Somewhere long forgotten by everyone. It used to be a grand building. Now it's nothing more than a pile of rubble. No one comes here anymore. Nor does anyone care about what once happened here. Although, this place does have something to do with the story I'm about to tell you. It was before I became a harbinger. And before Linny and the others joined the House of the Hearth. Due to certain events... I first killed Clairvy, and then her mother. And this is where it all happened. You were the one that killed Clairvy? Patience now. Allow me to explain Clairvy's side of the story first. I'll start from the beginning. Clairvy was six years old when she was brought by her mother, Crucibina, to live in the House of the Hearth. From the outside, it seemed like a fairy tale. A thriving family made up of kind adults and friendly children. Crucibina was the knave at that time, and the House of the Hearth was under her control. She was Clairvy's mother by blood, but she was also the mother to all the children in the house. Clairvy was happy here, for a time. But she quickly realized that being part of this family wasn't a fairy tale at all. It was a kind of purgatory. Purgatory? Exactly. The House of the Hearth takes in war orphans from all over to that. But as for how to raise them, that depends entirely on the person in charge. Crucibina came up with a novel idea. She would teach the children to fight. Force them to duel each other, and then crown as the king of the house the child who proved themselves most worthy of inheriting her title. It's difficult to estimate the number of children who died or were maimed in the process. There's little I can say about the ones who died. The ones that emerged with permanent injuries, on the other hand, well... They still served a purpose. They would be handed over to the doctor to be experimented on or sent away on dangerous missions. Nothing more than tools to be used and then discarded. So those were the experiments Clairvy was talking about. But what actually happened to her? You said that Clairvy was Crucibina's daughter, so if Clairvy tried to convince her to stop what she was doing, Crucibina probably would have listened, right? Despite being Clairvy's mother, Crucibina cared little for her daughter. She forced Clairvy to join the House of the Hearth only as a means to demonstrate her own impartiality as a mother. To prove that she treated all her children equally. Clairvy did try to convince her mother to change her ways, but it was to no avail. After her efforts failed, the only other option was to rise up and try to fight back. 
Unfortunately, the other children had already been thoroughly indoctrinated into the illusion of happiness Crucibina had created. Of course, there was one exception. Someone Clairvy's age who knew the truth about the House of the Hearth. Her name was Peruware. Wait, the friend that Clairvy mentioned? Friend, huh? I suppose we can call her that for now. Clairvy was a cheerful and passionate person with a tenacious spirit. Peruware, on the other hand, was rather cold-blooded. Her cold-blooded nature allowed her to see through Crucibina's facade. Yet, it was also this cold-bloodedness that prevented her from acting against it. At least at first. While Clairvy longed for freedom, Peruware was convinced that, amid all the fighting and violence, she would make it until the end. Despite their differences, the two became fast friends, united by their knowledge of the truth. Clairvy told Peruware that she hoped to create a real family, where no one would be killed or sacrificed. There may have been a certain naivete to her ideas, but Clairvy proved her determination many times over. She tried countless times to run away, ask for help, or expose the truth. But her efforts only earned her beating after beating. The only thing that kept her going was her strength of will. Even with her body racked with pain, she would still stand on her tiptoes and open the window at night. She and Peruere would look out at the moon together, a fierce longing for freedom shining in her eyes. But one day, that light simply vanished. Oh no. What happened? Her hopelessness resulted from a culmination of things. Ten years had passed. Ten years worth of failure after failure. She and Peruere weren't children anymore, but finding any chance to escape still seemed as hopeless as ever. It was during this time that Peruere suggested a new plan. If escaping was out of the question, why not take down the very person sitting on top of this throne of lies? Mother herself. Clairvy rejected that proposal. She claimed that, as a famous harbinger, Crucibina possessed an unimaginable amount of power. Trying to kill her would have an incredibly low chance of success. Clairvy never gave another reason, but Peruware could see it written all over her face. Clairvy still thought of Crucibina as her mother. Killing her own flesh and blood was a line she couldn't bring herself to cross. If she couldn't escape and fight back, then only one option remained. Precisely. Death was the only way that she felt she could be free. It happened during a duel. When she arrived at the dueling ring that day, her partner turned out to be none other than Peruere. The very person that had stood by her side all those years. It was a fierce battle. But ultimately, Clairvy decided to let Peruere end her life. From that moment on, Peruere's journey was one written in flames. When the rain finally came and washed it all away, there she stood, the sole victor in Mother's endless game of slaughter. A trail of corpses strewn across her path to success. It was the very result she had predicted ten years prior. Even then, she believed she would make it until the end. She wasn't surprised by the fact that she emerged as Mother's undisputed heir. Rather, her success left her with an inexplicable sense of restlessness. She was unsettled. And there was only one thing that could quell that sensation. Perhaps you two would like to take a guess as to what it was? Who's Sabina, you mean? But... But... Correct. This is the place where Peruware killed her best friend. A mere year later, this is also the place where she fought tooth and nail to kill the mother they shared. The moment she acted, 
any conception of what was right or wrong ceased to matter. It's one of the principles of the house. Only those who survive get to write the rules. Peruware won the battle, and became a harbinger herself. After which her majesty, the Tsaritsa, bestowed upon her a new name. Arlecchino. So the Perry Clairvy was talking about... It was you all along. You're Peruware. Arlecchino is just a name you got later. I left that name behind long ago. I must say, hearing it now does bring back memories. After I defeated Crucibina, the moniker of Mother died with her. I chose to forego the title she called herself and even chose to give up my own name. I rebuilt the House of the Hearth under a new identity. Not only as Arlecchino, but as father. And that is where the story ends. Any more questions? Yeah. Based on what you just told us, Clairvy wasn't a little kid when she was killed. So the Clairvy we meant... Was she really a spirit at all? I suppose you could call her an illusion born of flame. Her existence is like ashes to a fire. Something left over in the wake of blaze and ruin. You see, a certain power runs through my veins. It's not unlike a curse. My flames leave behind shadows of anything they consume. Of course, the chances of those shadows morphing into a sentient entity are exceedingly slim. Claire V is a very special case. Claire V died when she was 16 years old, but what emerged from the flames was her six-year-old self. Her appearance wasn't the only thing affected. Most of her memories were lost to the blaze as well. Memory is a mysterious thing indeed. Losing a portion of your memories will alter your sense of self. Lose ten years worth, however. And it would be like living in the past. Like returning to a version of yourself that... never grew up. No wonder Paimon got such a weird feeling when we were talking to her. Perhaps I should put it this way. Claire V is someone trapped in time. It may seem like she exists with us in the present, but she truly lives in the confines of her own past. So if all of that is true, then you must have known about Claire V for a long time. Indeed. She's a rather volatile and unstable entity. Sometimes she would look after the children, She's even saved some of their lives. But other times, she would hide from me and become obsessed with revealing the truth about the house to anyone who will listen. Shadows don't have the capacity to learn or grow. Any new information they encounter is quickly forgotten over time. Your attempts to expose Claire V to sunlight, they failed, yes? The reason is actually quite simple. In Claire V's mind, the house is impossible to escape, and it is this very perception that traps her there. But, no matter. All I have to do is kill her again, and all will be resolved. I don't anticipate so much as a single speck of ash will be left behind this time. It's too late for that. She broke the rules, and now she must be punished. That goes for Filial and Nantoy as well. She's had quite the effect on them. I hope you understand. The difference between Crucibina and myself lies in our formulation of the rules, not our policy for enforcing them. Upholding the rules without question is a trait we both share. Because that is how a household should be run. <sighs> Is this really what you want to do? Whatever could you mean? Don't you... 
Want to say a proper goodbye at least? Whether as a killer or as a father, there are two things that must be avoided at all costs. Anger and sorrow. Anger makes you impulsive. Sorrow causes you to waver. Well, it appears it's about time to proceed. Before we arrived, I told some of my well-behaved children to bring our troublemakers here by nightfall. I do believe I've kept my end of the deal. I give your friends quite a bit more time. As for what happens now, we'll just have to wait and see. Here they are, Father. Oh, you gonna execute them? Seeing something like that would actually be a first for me. Lenny! I'm sorry. I heard about how you helped buy us more time. But I still failed. I couldn't find a way to fulfill her wish. Huh? Are you... Perry? Indeed. It's been a while, Clairvy. Perry! <laughs> Stay right there. I'm sorry to postpone our reunion, but first I believe certain scores need settling. Father, let me explain. Out of my way. Father! You chose to conceal a threat to the house. And for that, you must be punished. Overall, however, I suppose your wrongdoing is hardly the most egregious of the bunch, so I'll deal with your punishments later. As for right now, the more pressing concerns are the traitors among us. By traitors? Do you mean us? Father, let me explain. We didn't mean to- Fultz, why don't you share what you heard? Yes, Father. Secret Midnight Meeting Number 3. Participants, Filial, Nantoy, Sato, Tati. Nantoy clearly said, if only Father wasn't the one who took us in. Sato added, I'm sick of this life. I just want to live as a normal person. Filial was the worst of them all. She called us crazies and said a bunch of mean things about Father. I did not! You're... You're lying! Fultz is trying to frame us! It's not like I'm the only one who heard those things. After that, you and Toddy and a bunch of other people started talking about Claire V. You were using all those things Claire V brought up as an excuse to question Father. We're birds locked in a cage! The only way out is to destroy it! That's what you said, wasn't it? You little... You just want me gone, don't you? What did I ever do to you, huh? And you, Shaplo, have you forgotten who stood by your sickbed, watched over you, and changed your dressings? Come on, let's hear it then. What's your reason for all this? <sighs> You're wrong, Filial. We don't want you to die. You're our family. Liar. You wouldn't be doing this if that were the case. So why? Why have you backed us into a corner? We all live in the House of the Hearth. You know the type of work we do, Filial. A single betrayal can cost dozens of us our lives. It's not like it's never happened before. That kind of thing is hard to forget. That's why the House of the Hearth cannot tolerate any form of betrayal. Ever since we came to Poisson, you've had seven secret meetings. A lot of the things you talked about really crossed the line. You've been spying on us for half a month? Wait a second. Now that I think about it, the move to Poisson was just a way to make it easier to spy on us, wasn't it? Because we were all in one place. You've had this planned all along. Filial, Nantoy, I'm sorry. I owe you both my life. I owe Claire V too. If it weren't for all your help after I got poisoned, I wouldn't be standing here today. If this were any other situation, I would do anything to repay that kindness, even if it cost me my life. But 
Rules are rules. I'm sorry. My hands are tied. Why? <laughs> Why? That's enough, Filial. We made a mistake. And we should own up to it. We broke the rules. Plain and simple. And now we have to face the consequences. I'm sorry, Chaplot. Fultz. I'm sorry, Father. We... Accept our punishment. Chaplot, according to the rules of the House of the Hearth, how should these traitors be punished? All those who betray the House pay with their lives. And so it shall be. <laughs> Father, please wait! Something you want to say, Linny? Please reconsider, Father. What Filial and the others did, does it really count as betrayal? We all come from broken families. From the very first day we joined the House of the Hearth, we wanted nothing more than to make it a real home. But the truth is, none of us know what a real home should look like. I'm not saying I have all the answers. All I know is this. Killing Filial and the others may uphold the rules, but doing so will only bring us further away from being a real family than we've ever been. So please, Father. Please. Reconsider. I agree with Linny. Father, please. Linny, you... <sighs> I also agree with Linny. <sighs> An order once given cannot be rescinded. However... Given the extent of your determination, I suppose we shall have to go about this a different way. Draw your weapons, and face me. Our weapons? Father, are you referring to a duel? Precisely. The rules of the house will not be altered. Traitors must be punished. However... Resolving disputes with a duel is also one of our rules, one that also applies to me. Demonstrate a sufficient showing of strength, and I shall offer a concession. Wait... Beat... Father in a duel? Impossible. Father is way too strong, even for Lenny. Did you hear that, Traveler? Lenny and the others have to duel the Knave. What should we do? Can they really win something like that? If they lose, those people from the house are really gonna be executed. Hey, are you listening? Don't you... want to say a proper goodbye, at least? Anger makes you impulsive. Sorrow causes you to waver. Looking at that expression on her face, she seems really serious about this. Guess that means there's no chance she's throwing the duel on purpose, huh? When guests are around, families are often on their best behavior. And any disputes are less likely to escalate. When the time comes, make the choice that you deem most appropriate in the situation, and lend your help to the House of the Hearth. What's wrong, Traveler? Hey, where are you going? Traveler? Do 
You're asking to join the duel against the knave? I'll allow it. We do have a ready-made dueling ring at our disposal, after all. All I would advise is this. Keep a firm grasp on your weapon, and give it your all. Any less. And you may just lose your life. Is it my turn now? Move it! Is it my turn now? With these rising Over here. flames! Now that's more like it. Is it my turn now? If I really have to draw my blade, then... With the fall of darkness, destruction shall rise. The show begins! Have a taste of purgatory. Shoot on sight! Enough! Is it my turn now? <laughs> Look at you. Trapped like a bunch of healthy warriors. Where's your luck? Cool it! <laughs> Here. The countdown has begun. Like a fly tangled in a web. Spare your energy. Running is a little piece. With these rising flames. Now for chance. This is so brilliant. <laughs> Look at you. Trapped like a bunch of helpless animals. Over here! Not bad. You've proven to be a worthy opponent after all. Into the shadows. Try to pace yourself! Spare your energy. Uh. Running is of little use. Look out! 
You should know better than to crowd in one place. Sorry for what, this pitiful excuse for an attack. You're stronger than I expected. A crimson moon? I can't move. Still, not strong enough to beat me. I believe we can end things here. It's not often that we get to enjoy the company of guests, after all. We wouldn't want things to get too out of hand. <coughs> Brother, are you all right? Lenny... Given that I am the victor of this duel, as agreed, the punishment stands. No! I never thought... Things would end like this. However, everyone involved in the duel demonstrated a remarkable level of strength and determination. In light of this, I'm prepared to change the method of execution. Elwar, the bottled flames I gave you for safekeeping. Do you still have them? Y yes I wasn't sure what they were for, but I've kept them super safe. I didn't lose a single one. Wonderful. Then, in just a moment, I'll have you administer them. Bottled flames? Indeed. They're the product of a secret experiment. Under certain special circumstances, flames can be extracted from my person and preserved. Once ingested, searing pain will spread across every inch of your body. No harm will come to you physically, but your memories will be burned away. If you can withstand the pain. When you awake, you'll have forgotten everything you know about the House of the Hearth. And will be expelled from the organization. In other words, administering this concoction will kill the version of you that grew up in the House. And give you a new identity. <laughs> 